Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to Infection Free Zone. This game is coming out on April 11th, and I have been given early access thanks to the developer, so I can show you what the game is going to be like, and whether or not it is something that you might want to play. The background story here is that there has been some sort of virus. Everybody turned into vampires slash zombies. You are the leader of a group of survivors, and now there seems to be hope for the future. So it's time to come out of hiding and rebuild society. And the beauty of this game is, you can do this anywhere. You can decide where you want to play. The game is created by the same developers as the one from 112 Operator and 911 Operator, which means that it has this sort of dynamic map where you can pick anywhere. You can play in your hometown. You can play in Paris and defend the Eiffel Tower. You can start in the White House if you so desire. So it gives you a ton of starting options. Once you've decided where to begin, whether it's your own hometown or maybe some famous landmark, now the game turns into a colony game. You need to manage your survivors, you need to manage your food, your resources to build additional things. You need to give your people a place to live. And at some point, you might even get in touch with other groups of survivors. The real question is, are those going to be friendly or not? Sometimes they may not want to join your group and instead find that scavenging whatever you have found is far easier. All of this, of course, is going to come while you're under pressure from the infected. Because while the virus may be in decline and while there may be hope, it is not exactly a safe world yet, as your survivors will soon find out. And so the real question is, can you keep your survivors safe in an area of your choosing? Let's have a look at some gameplay. Keep in mind you are looking at an alpha version of the game, so things might still change. As I mentioned in the intro, it is possible to play wherever you want. The game has a couple of recommended locations, such as Cambridge. Uh, you can play in uh, Piceri, or sorry, Picera in Italy. You can play in Atlanta in the United States. Um, I've already created a location over next to the Eiffel Tower. Let's say that you want to have, oh, I don't know, a survival situation somewhere in New York. You can pick New York. The game is going to look it up for you. And this, of course, will most likely require an internet connection. And then you're going to say, okay, this is my starting area. So this is going to be the part of New York where I want to start. But if you scroll out you can see that you can play anywhere. If I'm going to play in, let's say, Brentwood, you click here and the game is going to go, okay, fine, we're going to play here. If you zoom in more, you can see all of the various different buildings. What I would recommend that you do here is pick an area where you think there's going to be a decent mix between industry, regular buildings like houses, as well as some sort of shopping center because you're going to have to find food early game. The beauty about this play anywhere situation is that it has a ton of replayability. Sometimes as you're selecting a starting location, the game is going to go, are you sure about this? Because for example, Hoboken in New York, it says it used to be a densely populated area and the difficulty might be very high. Because apparently the more densely populated the area is, the more likely you encounter a ton of infected. Are you sure you want to play here? If you are very sure, then by all means. Um, otherwise, you can pick a different location. Now, it also does this in reverse. For example, if you pick, um, I'm not exactly sure what this is called, uh, Keensburg, the game is going to say, well, there's not enough buildings for you to play, so please pick something else. You can just go, nope, this is where I'm playing. Or you can go, okay, and pick something else. The game will also allow you to customize how many resources, how many people, and how many hordes you're going to be facing. So more people makes it easier, you got more workers, more resources of course makes it for far easier life. Because you don't have to scavenge as much, more hordes or fewer hordes changes the difficulty in defense. At the moment there is no option to select the starting month, but as you are going to be looking at the full release this will be different. Why is the starting month important? Well, winter is coming. And as you are approaching winter, your farms, for example, might not produce enough resources. So pick your starting month wisely. Let's have a look at some potential starting locations. How would you like to start at the White House? Of course, it's not going to be a perfect representation of the White House as you might know it. It's going to look um, 
a little less intact, shall we say. The game is going to say, are you sure you want to use this as your starting location? Now, important factors here are the amount of living quarters, the amount of storage capability, but also, to some extent, line of sight. Because you want to be able to defend against hordes. So having a place that is, for example, right in the middle, this headquarters over here would be awful. Because I have almost no line of sight. The enemy is going to be able to sneak up on this building from any of the alleys and start attacking your headquarters. So make sure that you take a building that is slightly more isolated. In fact, I think the White House uh, not only would be amusing for, of course, roleplay purposes, but also because it is pretty isolated. The building next to it is going to have to get either taken down or repurposed into something that can actually use. And as the place is already fenced off, that might actually help in keeping all of the bad guys out. That might also, in this case, help keep my own people in if these walls turn out to be too big. Now, this is just the White House. This is just one of the starting locations. Let's have a look at some other interesting spots you can pick. How about starting in Paris, in, uh, let's say, the Eiffel Tower? It's a bit of a weird building. Because the game doesn't exactly understand that this is a famous landmark in Paris. It just thinks that it is buildings on top of buildings on top of buildings. And it can actually house 1740 people and store 19,623 items. I think it would make for an awesome headquarters, albeit slightly on the bigger end of the scope, because I don't really think that you're going to have a colony worth 1700 people, especially considering we're starting with 40. Something like a star fort, like the one in Copenhagen, Denmark, could be a very good starting location. Looks defensible, right? Unfortunately, it's not just the bridges that you'll have to defend, because the infected can swim. This is a very important element in this game. Don't just trust bridges. It's a bit of a point of contention for me, because I think a defensive position like this would be great. Now, once you've actually picked your starting location, such as, I'm going to say, uh, this is going to be my headquarters, the game's going to go, okay, now let's get into some gameplay. All the buildings that you can see over here can get resources. They can have scavengers, check them out, and see whether there's anything in there. What are you looking for? Food. That's your key priority early game. Food. Ammo is going to keep your guns going. The amount of weapons that you have are going to get distributed over squads. Fuel is going to drive your vehicles. And various construction resources will help you build your colony, improve your buildings, and eventually also be able to do research. Some materials, such as being able to get explosives, might come in very handy later. For now, let's start out with getting a squad. And let's start checking out the buildings around. I think that this is an excellent starting location and this is going to allow you to really be able to very quickly make a very solid defense. The only problem is um, there might not be a whole lot to scavenge because all these areas over here, they unfortunately do not seem to be part of this map. So in this sense, be very careful where you start, not only because this might be a great starting location, but I've basically cut off three of the sectors, so all of my resources are going to have to come out of the other parts. Thankfully, there's a ton of shops slash restaurants, so there are so many places that I can find food that, for now, food really shouldn't be an issue. As you're scavenging buildings, your people will need some time to actually go through the building. The bigger the building, the more time it's going to take to scavenge. Considering that there is a day-night cycle, with a night cycle when the enemy is far stronger and tends to come at your base, it is important to pick your buildings wisely. You really ideally don't want to have your squads out there in the night. They do tend to carry firearms, that is, if you have them available. Right now I only have two of them left. If I were to create another squad, two of them would have the last couple of pistols that I have, the rest of them are going to go melee. So that's not strictly ideal. You can build additional squads if you have, for example, a safe area. In this case, I think there's not that much around. So I'm just going to sca scavenge a bit faster by using a third squad. Again, what you're trying to find is food. And the game, if you have the tutorial turned on, is going to say you need to scavenge food from buildings ASAP. After that, the game is going to talk you through what to do. As for these scavenging squads, try to keep them alive. Right now, they're all rookies. 
as these people start to actually deal damage against the Zeds, they will get experience. It's going to make them more accurate, it's going to make their effective shooting distance improve, and they will even be better at scavenging. So, if at all possible, keep your squads alive. Something the game will also allow you to do is customize any building to do anything you want. This is a feature I really appreciate about the game, because it makes it so flexible. Yes. You can turn any building into something useful. The building over here, for example, is abandoned. I can now turn it into, for example, a warehouse to store additional resources. I can turn it into a shelter. At some point, I'll be able to turn it into a house, a gathering place, even a headquarters. Should something happen to my own headquarters, I wonder. We also have the ability to produce greens, uh, sorry, greenhouses and fields eventually. We're going to be able to get sawmills, tools factory, even arms factories and chemical plants. Of course, at this point, your colony will have tacked up. That is something that you'll be able to do eventually. You're going to have to play a little bit first in order to start unlocking research. And after that, you can start picking the direction that your colony is going to take. Of course, you will be able to research all of it, should you be able to find enough parts to start doing the research. You might be able to figure out what is going on with these Zeds. It allows poison production from infected bodies. Weapons become more lethal for the infected. So you can have all sorts of different research going in order to make your colony better. Before that, however, let's make sure that these people have a place to live. So we're going to adapt buildings into shelters. It doesn't say what buildings you need to convert, it just says convert buildings. If you want to use this building, by all means. You only need to do one thing, ideally, and that's scavenge the thing first. Make sure you have it completely scavenged, completely looted. This building, um, there's quite a lot of resources in here. The problem that I do see with this building is if I want to turn this into, for example, a uh, shelter for my people, it is going to cost me loads and loads and loads of resources. It's going to provide living to 157 people, which is far too much. But this is where the game has figured out a solution. If you want to do only a part of the building, you can. And you can later adapt the rest of the building as your needs change. So you can say, well, I just want to have like 30 people living there. And then it's only going to cost you 41 resources. In this case, I'm going to go for this building and I want to turn this into something that is going to turn into a shelter. It is not going to house as many people as I would like, but I'm thinking of using this building over here as potentially a warehouse, so that I'll be able to store additional units of resources. The game is also prompting me to set up some defenses. Good idea. Let's put up a guard tower over here. I do have some resources, and I think it is going to be far more useful to put those resources to work over here with a guard tower. Oh, we also got signs of smoke. There might be survivors. Whether those are hostile or not, that's entirely up to you to investigate. It's not a high priority. Um, it could be hostiles, it could be friendlies. If they're friendly though, you're gonna have to feed those people and do you have enough food? And that is where all of the survival aspect is going to come in. As the game now indicates, you need to do a lot of work using the people that you have. Right now, I have 19 out of 40 people unemployed. That's not good. I need to start making some use of these people. I need to start putting them to something useful. So I'm going to have some of them build a wooden tower. One over there. One all the way on the other side. Because as I mentioned, these are the only two ways into the base. Um, I can also do this slightly different and, for example, put up a fence first. I can put up, um, depending on the resource that you have, a wooden palisade, a wooden gate, a metal fence, metal gate, or even a brick wall. I don't have any bricks at all, so unfortunately that's not an option. Um, as for wooden resources, I don't have that much either. But thankfully, this island is full of it. So I can just tell my people to start gathering a lot of these trees, start taking them down, and with that, start getting a lot of resources. Sadly, they do not grow back, as far as I've seen. So start really picking what you want to work on, lest you find yourself out of resources. Another beautiful part of this game is that a building that you don't actually plan on using can get destroyed. 
And when you destroy a building, you can get a lot of resources from that, including, in this case, bricks. It will, however, take a long time. It's going to take a lot of time. The bigger the building is, the more time it's going to take. So again, plan your labor accordingly. In this other outpost that I've built, I found that defense against the infected is difficult. It takes a lot of resources. You're going to go through a lot of resources to build your units, like to build your buildings. But it also keeps, let's say, a unit to feed the buildings, constantly scavenging for, in this case, ammo. You will need firearms to protect your base. Bow and arrow is simply not enough. Maybe if you just make a wall of guard towers, you might be able to keep them at bay. But the infected break down walls. The palisades are the first ones to go. The metal fences take a little longer to defeat. And if you really want structures to last, build brick walls. Because their structural integrity is 1000 points versus for the metal walls 750 and just 400 for the palisades. It is not an easy game. And that is where the attention and the challenge lies. Make sure that you use your resources and get the most out of them. You will be strapped for food. You will be strapped for ammo. You might not, however, be strapped for building resources. So don't worry about building more and more and more. Worry about repairing them. Because that can be the challenge. Building a self-sustaining colony in this particular build is likely not that possible because I don't have access to all the research. Nevertheless, I hope that what I have shown you is going to give you a bit of an idea of how the game plays and whether it's something that you might enjoy. Let me know down below in the comments what area you would pick to defend. Are you going to fight in your hometown? Are you going to fight around a landmark? What is going to be your infection-free zone? Looking forward to seeing your comments down below. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button so more people can find it and also get an informed opinion about the game. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon for more.